cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the next three um, trigonomic functions, which are secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So what if we were to take the secant, cosecant, and cotangent of this angle x? What would that look like? Secant is defined as the ratio between the hypotenuse and the adjacent side. So it's hypotenuse over adjacent. Cosecant is hypotenuse over the opposite side. And cotangent is adjacent side over the opposite side. So if we looked at our example of right triangle here, secant would be equal to the hypotenuse, which is C, divided by the adjacent side, which is A. Cosecant would be equal to the hypotenuse, C, divided by the opposite side, which is B. Cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. So our adjacent side is A. And we would divide by the opposite side, which is B. So that's what it would look like for this specific right triangle. Let's move this over a bit so we can look at this some more and analyze this. You may have already noticed that secant, cosecant, and cotangent are just the inverses of sine, cosine, and tangent. Secant is also equal to 1 over the cosine of x. And cosecant is equal to 1 over sine of x, or theta, or whatever variable you have. And cotangent is 1 over tangent of x. So each of these is the inverse of one of the first three trigonomic functions. Remember to not get confused about secant and cosecant, because cosecant is the inverse of sine and not the inverse of cosine. So don't mix up the cos and like put them together, it has to be like this. So secant is the inverse of cosine, and cosecant is the inverse of sine, and vice versa. So sine would be equal to 1 over cosecant, and cosine would be equal to 1 over secant. And tangent would be equal to 1 over cotangent. This is extremely helpful if you're given one of the first three trigonomic functions and asked to solve for one of these. So because these three are derived from the first three, you can you only need to remember the acronym SOKOTOA. Now I apologize because I put secant and cosecant in the wrong place and I should have flipped that, but as if you remember SOKOTOA to help you remember the first three, you can easily derive the next three using the original formulas by just flipping it. So if you remember opposite over hypotenuse, you can remember hypotenuse over opposite. And if you remember adjacent over hypotenuse, you can obviously remember the inverse. So let's scroll back over here and look at this right triangle again, and let's put some actual values for these side lengths. Side A will now be the square root of 3, side B will be 1, and, si and side C, or the hypotenuse, will be 2. You may recognize this as being the ratios of a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so we know x is going to be equal to 30, and this angle here is going to be 60 degrees. But that's not necessary for this problem because we have the side lengths and we can solve for the ratios. So secant x is going to be so secant of x is going to be the inverse of cosine. 
and we know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we know this secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So our hypotenuse is going to be 2, and the and this side adjacent to x is going to be the square root of 3. So we would divide by the square root of 3. But we need to rationalize this because we don't want a radical in the denominator. So let's multiply by square root of 3 over square root of 3. And this would be equal to 2 square root of 3 over 3. Next, cosecant. We know cosecant is the inverse of sine, and sine, according to Sokotoa, is opposite over hypotenuse. So cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So for our line x, we know our hypotenuse is going to be 2, and our opposite side from x, if we look across, is going to be 1. So let's put 1. So it's just 2 over 1, which is just 2. Finally, cotangent x. We know cotangent is the inverse of tangent, and tangent, according to Sokotoa, is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent is adjacent over opposite. The adjacent side to our angle x is going to be the square root of 3, and opposite from our angle x is 1, so we would divide by 1, so this is just going to be equal to the square root of 3. So cotangent x is the square root of 3. Let's say we are given cosecant of theta is equal to 13 over 12, and we are asked to find what the secant of theta is. So let's draw a picture because that is usually a good place to start. So we know cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So if we look at our angle theta here, and we fill in our hypotenuse, which is going to be the numerator, and then our de denominator of 12 is going to be the opposite side. So opposite of theta would be this side here, so that would be 12. So what would our other side be? Because we need that to find the secant because secant is hypotenuse over adjacent, so we obviously need the adjacent side. So this is 13, 12, and we could just use the Pythagorean theorem, but if we have a hypotenuse of 13 and a side of 12, we know this is going to be a 5, 12, 13 triangle, so we know this would be 5. If you'd like to know more patterns like this, like a 3, 4, 5 triangle, you can go watch my other video on the first trigonomic functions. So let's solve for secant of theta. We know secant is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So our hypotenuse is going to be 13, and the side adjacent to angle theta is going to be 5. So secant of theta is equal to 13 divided by 5. Let's look at one final example. If we are given the sine of x is the square root of 2 over 2, and cosine of x is equal to the square root of 2 over 2, what would cotangent x be equal to? Well, we could draw a picture and then solve it from there, but there is an even easier way. As we learned in our last video, the tangent of x is going to be equal to sine over cosine. So if we know cotangent is the inverse of tangent, then we can just flip this, and so cotangent will be equal to cosine over sine. So now we can just simply divide our two givens. I'm just going to do these all in one color so we can simply keep track of it. So cosine, I'm going to do that in pink, and I will do sine, and I will do sine in blue. 
So cosine is the square root of 2 divided by 2. And we will divide that by sine. So if we're dividing by the square root of 2 over 2, we can just multiply by 2 over the square root of 2. And so if we multiply these together, the 2's will cancel, the square root of 2's will cancel, and we'll just be left with 1. So the cotangent of x is going to be equal to 1. So that is it. Our final three trigonomic functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent.